Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the Telos Chillum, their park board. This board features Telos's park camber, which is a steeper camber underfoot, slightly mellow dip in the middle, a little bit more mellow out in the tip. Basically, it's camber 2.0. That's all you need to know. That's going to give you the load, pop, snap, and drive from this board while making it still a little bit less hooky out in the tip and the tail. This board is available in 146, 149, 152, 155, and 158. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day with zero winds, warmer temps. It was firm, fast corduroy with pockets of heavy powder off the run, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. Overall, the flex on this board is just below a middle-of-the-road park flex. You have a softer tip that stiffens up just outside the insert pack through to the middle. Then it gets a little soft right in the dead center of the board with a lot of torsional flex. This board is stable underfoot, but still loose out in the tip and the tail, so you do get some chatter and flap that does resonate back in really rutted out terrain. Be prepared for this board to bend and flex with everything, so keep those knees bent. And you might get jarred if you just hit things really hard, like you come down hard in a divot or anything like that, you're just gonna feel it, but it doesn't wanna wash out. The camera profile is very easy to engage in this board. It's very mellow, almost skate-like with how it is, so you don't have to be on top of your game or more precise when you load it up to pop off a side hit, cat track gap, or launch a roller. You know, you can just ride along, Quickly load it up, snap, rebounds, you're in the air. It's got solid snap to it. Now, when it comes to hitting jumps, I think there are limitations with this thing because it's got these softer tips in there. So if you're not landing fully bolts every time, you're probably gonna wheelie out. I'd say anything 30, 35 feet or bigger, you might have issues, but the smaller stuff, not a problem. It launches off the lip. You don't have to worry about it. It pops where you need it to. It just wants to get in the air. It feels fully at home just boosting off stuff. When it comes to buttering with this board, you want to be more subtle and nuanced. You want to keep your weight just outside that insert pack and slowly leverage it out on the nose or the tail. You don't want to put it way out because you will fold it. That's just due in part to the camber profile and the flex of this board. Now with that said, it's nice because you're basically not manhandling this board. You're just slowly rolling into it, getting it to do what you want. It does lock in and it will hold and you will get that pop out from underfoot. You will notice right away that that dominant camber section will engage, it wants to pop out. Now, like I said, if you put your weight way out, you will fold it. The same can be said with jibbing. It's one of those boards that you just wanna keep that weight right outside that back insert or that front insert pack when you're doing a tail press or a nose press. When you do that, it locks in and it locks in well, it holds all the way to the end of the feature and you're still able to snap right from underfoot to get off of it. When you go sideways, this board locks in, fully hugs right around the feature and slides with ease. It's one of those boards that you don't really have to think about when you get sideways. You know it's going to lock in. It's going to slide. You don't have to worry about it clapping out on you, but it is soft and playful right inside the insert packs. So be aware that, you know, if you're really aggressive and come down hard, you may clap it out, but for most people that probably will not be an issue. This board transitions smoothly from edge to edge. It's quick and nimble, but it steers more underfoot which is fine, that's great because you know you can just really manipulate with a little bit of ankle movement how you wanna drive it. Now, if you're more aggressive and you're trying to drive it off the back foot and push it through a turn, that's where you hit the limitations of this board. You'll notice right away that when you do that, you lose power out of the tail, the board may kick out. It's best if you're more subtle and nuanced with it and just slowly transition it up. Try to keep it steering from inside the front foot or inside the back foot, you know, really center flexing that board or just right under the insert pack. It's great for short, quick setup turns, those tight little ones where you're just making a couple quick maneuvers right before you hit a feature or mellow laid back carves. It's when you really rail this thing that you start to notice that you're like, hey, there's limitations and I may be taking it to the danger zone. 
Who's this board for? The park rider that wants a slightly softer flexing board that still has snap to it. This is one of those boards that's fun to ride and it's mostly predictable, but I kind of wish I'd upsized to the 158, which is a rarity because a 155 has been my park size for decades now. This has been like my go-to, 5456 instead of a 58. What I noticed with this board is just those softer tips cause some limitations in there, especially when you're landing hard or you're really trying to push the board through a turn. That's fine, it's a park board. It should have limitations. I'm not expecting this thing to be an all mountain freestyle board. I'm expecting it to still be soft and playful, which for me, it was, but I overwhelmed it a few times and that happens. I'm not saying you will, I'm just saying that I did and it surprised me a little bit. The side cuts dialed, the flex pattern, while softer in the tips is a little bit loose, it's predictable, you can figure it out in a few laps, but the snap, the snap is great. Comparable boards, the Nitro T1, the Capita Indoor Survival, the Battalion Evil Twin. Binding recommendations, the Nitro Team, the Union Contact Pro, the Rome Vice. This has been my review of the Telos Chillum. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.